Okay, I started the recording because I will be uploading this later. Um, so uh, to everyone who is watching the recording, um, I will go over what we covered. Um, I'll, I'll write up some code to like fill in the gaps to what we do until now. Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I, okay, so what I do is I record these lectures and I upload them later, but I just realized I forgot to record. Okay, so let's print something. Okay, let's print bark. Okay, so let's create a dog. Well, you know, okay, def, um, print information, info. So we can print self.read. Self.height. Okay, so what kind of dog do we want to make? Is it, what kind of dog? Husky, okay, yes, good. Husky pride. And he is a big, he's a big boy. He's a, one of those like freaking, have you guys seen those seals? Those super fat seals? <laughs> like all those memes and stuff like that? Let's make it super, yeah, ch yeah, chonk. Let's make him a chonker, so. Let's give him like, what's a fat chonker? He's 500 pounds. He's a super mega chonker. Okay, let's call some methods. Let's make it bark. Let's d dot. Let's make it print info. Oh, height. Okay, yeah, but yeah, nobody cares about height. Let's make it weight. So he's a big chonker. <sighs> okay, so this is what it does. Okay, so let me go over this. So we've created a class dog. This is a dog object. And so we have two methods in here, bark and print info. So we can take this object and call these functions. And so the reason we create class is so that we can reuse a template for multiple things. So let's create another dog. Um, it? Yeah, it is very similar to this. Um, okay. Okay, so how this? So say we're doing a print info, and this is a good boy. And we want it to bark before it gives us information about itself. So we can do bark. However, because it is inside a class, to the class, you have to reference everything in the class with a self, self.bark. So let's create a new dog, um, uh, chicken. Oh, what's a, what's a dog? Mafia rats, mafia rats. There, that's, a, there, that's another type of dog. Snitch, not mafia snitch. And he is, uh, he's a frail, he's a lightweight, no. <laughs> okay, let's make it, let's let it print info. So, wait, let's just, print. let's just print an empty line so we can see, differentiate it. So, the reason we create class is so that we can reuse the template over and over. You can see here we created a dog that was a mafia snitch. We also created a dog that was a husky. Um, <clears throat> okay. So what do I want to go over now? Okay, so what do we want? What happens if we want to create a specialized dog? Dog. Like they're like this uh, class. Um, big dogs, no, corgi, yeah, corgi dogs, oh, right. yeah, golden, yellow, do no, I can't, spotted dogs, yeah, spotted dogs, 
So we can extend the dog. We can inherit everything we had in the super method by doing this. And so now, now we can add stuff like spotted dog. Now have this angry dog. No, 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 it's a violent dog, violent dog. So now we can add new actions. So let's create def attack the attack attacks the drug kingpin. We have a war dog who helps us sniff out drug kingpins and attack him. And so we need to give let's let's give a thing that we can attack. Let's give let's give him a name. Let's give the person we want to attack. And so now we can say that the dog attacked name. So how do you add more stuff that you can print? You can put a comment and then put like whatever else you want to print. Okay, so now we can create a violent dog that can also attack drug kingpins. Okay, let's do it. So D. So dog, so let's do a chihuahua. This is one, this is one crazy chihuahua. This dog. And he is like 100 pounds. Oh yeah, violent dog, violent. So what we can do is we can call everything that I inherited from dog so inherited from here, you can see here, dog, dog. We can call whatever inherited, but we can also call whatever I added in the new method. And this is called inheritance. Let's do the recap. Um, Walter White. See here? We are, so like you don't see the bark here, but it does work because I did bark because it inherited everything. And we can also uh, f give weight. Uh, sorry. So we can access everything in the super class. Hey, does this all make sense? This is kind of confusing. Um, and so if you have any questions, please type them in chat or unmute yourself and say something. We're doing pretty good. I went over like most of Python in half an hour. <laughs> okay. It reminds me of Critter's assignment. Interesting. I actually did not take CSC 143, so I wouldn't know. Well, I did take CSC 143. I don't think he just did Python in CSC 143. Okay. Um, so why do we want to extend other classes? It because it allows readability. So what happens if we want to create a different dog? Um, let's create a uh, good pupper, and he doesn't hurt anyone. He can also def deny war crimes. Deny deny Armenian no I'm just kidding. Deny war crimes. Crime. <laughs> okay, print. Uh what's a war what's an old war crime that isn't controversial right now? What's not a recent? Chan, what's a not non-recent war crime? No, that is way too gulag. That is too re crusades. Yes, crusades. The crusades. Crusades. Okay. So oh no, we have to get a crime. Okay, so it's a nice crime whatever we get in. Okay, it was a never happened. Okay, so now we can create a good pupper. 
<laughs> so we so we have a violent dog. We also have a good popper. So okay, pop. Doggo. Um, let's give it fifty pounds. Okay, so pop dot deny war crime. Crusades. Crusades. So what, what you see here is that we use the same template class, dog, and we made it more specific. And we created a violent dog and a good pupper. And so basically making classes allows reusability. And so we don't want to like, so say if we didn't do it. So say we want a, so we have these two dogs. Oops. So say we have these two dogs and we want to call their methods. Well, instead of copy pasting this, copy pasting all these prints is copy, copy, blah, 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 copy, blah, 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 blah. We save a lot of time because we, Create reusability within our code. Does that make sense? Hopefully it makes sense. Okay, let's go over some more interesting stuff. This is probably why you guys are here. Well, you guys are probably here most interested in. So let me go back to the idol. Okay, so let's create a array list, one, two, three, four. How do we get, to, so say we want a two, three, four, five. Let's create a one. So we can do x plus one for x in, oops, a, let's do a, because we already have x earlier. So x in a. So th that kind of looks confusing, doesn't it? Like, however, let me explain it. So what this does, oh wait, I should go over for loops. Okay, let me go over for loop. So say we want to print out all four numbers. So usually in pot, you can honestly do this and it prints it out really nicely. However, what happens if we don't want all the brackets and commas and shit like that? What we can do, usually this is what you do, but like, let me just get, for the sake of explaining what a for loop is. So for, we create a new variable, a in x. That is how we create a for loop. So, excuse me. Okay, so what this basically does is every time you do call, every time you lope over, x is set to an element of a, I mean, a is set to an element of x. Let's print a. And so guess what, this would print five, two, three, four, one after another, like this. And so that's basically for loop, very simple. And, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about making for loop? And so how do we create a for loop that iterates from zero to three? So in Java, you usually have something like uh, for x equals zero, i, I less than 10, i plus plus. How do we emulate that in Python? So to emulate that in Python, for a in range 10. And you don't need the parentheses because you, you just don't. Like you see parentheses here, it's necessary for Java, but for Python it's not. So this, what this will do is print from zero to nine.
Okay, so everyone knows how to do for loop. While loop, let's do while loop. So let's say we have like a B equals 10. And we want to equal zero. While, while B is uh, less than 10, uh, B, so we want to print the B and iterate B. Let me just let me just comment this out for clarity. And so now you know two loops. Does that all make sense? If it doesn't make sense, make sure you tell me. Okay, now let's go over list comprehension. So from that information, we can do now do list comprehension. So it's basically like a for sort of like a for loop in one line. Okay, so y equals. So this is. So if you remember, the score brackets is for creating a list. So now we are creating a list. So what, are, so what we could put in here is um, comprehension for, I don't know, us. <laughs> so if we did like A for A and X, if you remember earlier, like A is just some like random arbitrary, like it's just some arbitrary variable that gets set to a value in whatever we're looping over. And so you see here for A and X. So what this basically does is it puts A for whatever value A is when it's in X. So if it, if it is uh, one, one, two, three, four, so A for A and X. So the first time we do it, A is one. So what do we do? We put an A in the list. Next time, A is two. What do we put in the list? Two, because A is two. And so forth until we go to the fourth one. However, if you do A plus one, you get two, three, four, five, because A in X, so A is one, then you take one plus one and you put it in and you put a two in. A is two, and then you do two plus one, and then you put it into the list, and then you get two. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. And this is super powerful because it saves a lot of lines of code, and um, you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Okay, let's go over lambdas. So in Python, functions can be stored as variables. So a, let's do a equals f. f was, no, how about squared? Earlier we defined squared. To make it a variable, you just omit the um, parentheses. So let's actually just copy this, squared, so it's more clear. Then you omit the parentheses. So we stored a function in a variable. It's kind of weird, but you can store functions in a variable. And then we can print A, if you remember A. Let's just comment everything else. So we put in two and what is two squared for? Okay. Um, however, we can also do something pretty cool. We can create a lambda. Lambda. And this is another way to create a function. So let's have an argument, x. It might look a little weird, but think of there's just the parentheses there. But we, for lambdas, you take away the parentheses. So think, think of it as like a, so def, def is how you create a function. So, so this is what you try to do in one line. However, this is um, in Python. How do you actually do this is lambda instead of def x return x times x. 
And that allows us to create a function within one line. And we actually do not need the return statement because it automatically returns. And so what we can do, and this will do the same thing, it will print four because two times two is four. And so we create, we just, we just replicated a function. We just take this. We've replicated something that we did, that we had to do in the, so this score value is actually unnecessary because just do that. So we've taken something that took two lines and put it into one. And if you're thinking about it, like if, so that, that's a lambda. That, like, I think I'm just such a great teacher. I just make it seem so easy. Like usually when I try to learn this stuff, like for the first time, it's super hard. But <laughs> wait, oh yeah, someone asked earlier about me having a face cam. Does it? Who, who, okay, to say why for face cam and no for no face cam. Type into chat. <laughs> okay, I don't think you guys really care. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? No questions. Okay, can, can you guys type in the chat that you guys are actually here? Like some of you guys, just type something. So I don't feel, I don't feel like nobody. Okay, so B said the Lambda thing is whack. Um, can, you, can you elaborate? Like, is it just because it looks weird? Okay, yeah, it is super, it's, it is kind of weird. Okay, so but the thing is like, I, programmers are super lazy, so they want type of shit. Time, right? So let's do some evolution. So a person wants something that, that returns the value squared. So in, in the old way, you do, you take an argument, def, square, squared, x. And, okay, so let me go over why you want to store this thing in a variable later, uh, in just one second. Um, so, squared. Wait, actually, let me just go over that right now. Oh, yeah, screw this. Okay, let, let me show you guys something cool you can do. Um, it's A there. Okay, so... We actually have the A here, so A of two. It, I, I am in the interactive development for intro.py right here. This is intro.py. And so that means A is right here, so I can use it down here. So it's basically extension. So say we have X and we want to square all the elements. So let's, the, here, so, someone tell me how you do it. So if you remember earlier, so what a for, and we also have a function that can square things. How do I get, how do I get 25? Sean, you can answer this too. Let's see if you know. Give me this using, using the function and the list parameter and the list. Trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. If you're paying attention, you'd know. What lambda? Here, just ignore lambda. Okay. Put it on the end. It squares this thing. Wait, Sean, were you not listening? What yellow? No, you were. I literally said lambda is square the value. Okay, so we
Okay, so the problem, okay, so B had a good, it's kind of weird, you guys just put like B's and F's, <laughs> it's, it's fine though. Um, I think B had a really good guess, however you cannot actually, so what you do, what yours does is basically um, five, it tried to multiply two lists together, because what you pass into A is list, However, you cannot multiply lists together. Like, think about two array lists. Does it make sense to multiply them together? However, something you can do is you can actually double it. So when you multiply list by something, like a number, you get two of those lists inside one list. So y equals So that's what happens. So f had this correct answer. Oh yeah, it's kind of confusing. Like I made this A here, like A of like say element E for element. For you can put anything. You can do A's, E's. It doesn't really matter. They're sort of arbitrary. So F does have the correct answer. Congratulations, F. Let's all press F in the chat for F. No, oh that's kind of bad. <laughs> that was an awful joke, sorry. I, I just had to do it. Trying, you, you're not even paying attention, brother. No, you are. You, you literally had to ask A what A does. OK, next. Okay, I just went over Python in 45 minutes. I like, does everything make sense? Does anyone want me to go over something again? Type in the chat of anything you want me to review over. Okay, the unnamed script solution. That is a great question. Okay, so I have a terminal down here, right? Ter so this is a built-in terminal. So you can have a terminal here. Command prompt is a Windows terminal. However, like it's just built into the IDE if you have PyCharm. So it's, it's basically this right here, you see? They're basically the same thing, very similar. And so you can see here, so in, on Windows you do dar, to see all the files you have, right? Let me find it. Intro.py. Let me copy this. Um, in, if you have a Linux system or a Unix like Mac, you do um, uh, ls. However, with Mac, I mean, no, with Windows, it is here. Okay, so now we do Python. Python is some, when you download Python, what it allows you to do is create a Python command. And um, you have to do something with your heart, you have to do something with a computer so that your terminal does recognize Python as a command. Dash I, that's just, that's one of, so dash I stands for interactive. So you can interactive. However, because programmers are super lazy, they removed the dash interactive and made it dash I. Then we do intro.py. Now we enter and we can do whatever. We can create a new variable, y equals uh, five, or you can use existing variables like x that is already in here. Is that what you're talking about, B? The, hopefully I answered your question. Did I answer your question? Okay, thank you. Okay, that's great. That's good here. Is that, okay. Um, so let's talk about some finance. And I, I will be, so finance is pretty cool because if you want to retire early, so like, say we, we, so say even if we have a real world application like biology, like using Python for biology, like not all of you guys are gonna be in biologist and, um, 
only a few of you guys will develop a super virus that will try to end the world. <coughs> Does that sound familiar, guys? <laughs> I am trying to... <coughs> Here, can you guys uh, laugh for me? That's pretty funny, right? Laugh. No, 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 we gotta do this. Laughs. There. <laughs> okay, so like, you, you aren't trying to compute some virus to end the world, right? You're not, you are not the Chinese go government. Hey, if, if I do commit suicide with two gunshots through the back of my head, I did not kill myself, okay? Just saying that. So if you do try to program the a super virus that will end the world, like the Chinese government, then you'd probably want to learn some applications of Python in biology. <laughs> right? However, not all of you guys are trying to create super viruses, right? Well, hopefully. Yeah, only a few guys, a few of you guys are going to, right? However, finance is applicable to everyone because um, your retirement fund, you are allowed to invest money. So like say you have a 401k or, or a Roth IRA. So you have a 401k or a Roth IRA where you have your retirement funds. You can choose companies to buy and sell and you can invest in companies through your retirement funds so that you do not have to work until you're 80 and die like on the job. You, get, you can grow your wealth. So the next application will be applicable to everyone. And it is finance. So what is a stock? Well, stock sort of represents ownership in a company. Say you have, um, stock is basically a publicly, a share of a publicly traded company. So let stock and share be synonymous. So say you have a company that sells weed. You have a weed company. You have 10 shares. So if you have 10 shares, what percentage of the company does each share represent? Let's do some quick maths. Any not hot man in the chat do some quick maths? You have 10 shares what percentage of the company is one share if you have 10 shares. 10%, okay, yeah, whatever. Because one divided by 10 is 0.1, and 0.1 as a percentage is 10%. So with a stock, you can, so you can own companies like Microsoft. If you buy a share of Microsoft, you own like one millionth of Microsoft. You own Microsoft, like multi-billion companies. Isn't that crazy? Like, you can just spend a few hundred dollars on a share of Microsoft and you're a shareholder of Microsoft. Well, you probably don't have a lot of influence because you don't have that many shares. You have to get a lot more shares because more shares means more influence on the board. Oh, we still have someone left. Okay, so that is what a stock is. It's a share in a company. Okay, so what is a stock market? A stock market is where you can buy and sell shares. Well, hopefully you guys know what a stock market is. But how do you buy stocks? You go to some thing, Robinhood.com or like eTrade.com. You click on a stock, you create an account, log in, you click on a stock, MU. Buy MU. Buy one. You view order and then you do some confirmations and you can buy one share of a stock. And that is how, okay, that is what is stock. Okay, so how do you value companies? So can someone give me some ideas of how you can evaluate the worth of a company? Well, yeah, that is, yeah, that, that is a good point. Mark stock price times stock count. That is the market cap of a company about like how much, 
how, how about like evaluating the business? So like, don't think about the stock, think about Microsoft. How can you evaluate the worth of Microsoft? Like think about a business wise. From a business perspective, how, Yes, yes, revenue. That is one example of how you can determine the price of the stock. So revenue, their profit, how many assets they have, and assets are basically buildings, cash they hold, other stocks they own, and those are assets. So these are all factors. One second, there is some case code. Okay, um, so how do you figure out some, how do you figure out, how do you look at these metrics? Go to yahoo.finance. Um, let's do, uh, let's do Microsoft. I was talking about Microsoft, let's do Microsoft. There's a ticker, MSFT. Okay, so, so market. You can see like stuff like revenue, P. These are a bunch of like just definitions. Like say you want to, you can see all these statistics. Okay, so this might look a little daunting. What the hell is basic EPS? What the hell is basic average shares? What is EBTA? Well, how do you learn this? Well, well isn't that crazy? <laughs> now you read this article. And then you can figure out what that means. Wow. Okay, so what you can do is you can look at all this, you can do some stuff, multiply some numbers together, do some divisions, look at the price, and you can evaluate the company that way. That is called fundamental analysis. That is what Warren Buffett uses to um, assess the company's worth. Um, I will not be going over how to do that right now, but how do you get this information? Let's create a new file. Intro two. Okay, so so to, how do you create? How do you add a library to? How do you how do you install a library in Python? So you. Here, um, I recommend using Anaconda prompt because it's super nice. So you do like, so if you, um, if you were on uh, Windows, you do Python, um, like some library, some library, right? However, Anaconda, you do not have to do the Python install. Okay, I want you guys to all do this. And then I also want you to do a pip install. Okay, so. Hopefully you get, so once you guys get the libraries, please um, say something in chat or something like that. Are right, you still watching? Okay, Sean, how do you evaluate a company? What are some metrics? Uh, money. Dude, you give me, dude. We're not listening? Yeah, yeah, listen, watch, money. watch. Okay, so AJ has, nice, good job, boys. Okay, Sean, did you install them too? It's all. You see, you were not paying. Okay, you only have two other people that know where they Yeah, so? <laughs> anaconda prompt. What? With anaconda prompt. You have anaconda? Yeah. Okay, pip install uh, yahoo fin. Yahoo underscore fin. 
Wait. Okay, sorry guys. I need to uh, get these libraries on my little brother's computer real quick. And you're not listening, brother. Let's take bro. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, if everyone can open their IDE or anything like that and follow along, that'd be really great because what I'm gonna do now is, um, okay, I'm just gonna go over some, oh yeah, also import pandas, install pandas. Wait, no, no, no. It should be pandas, yeah, pandas, okay. So let's do some things. So from Yahoo Fin, type along. Watch me. Try and stop quit playing. <laughs> okay. Sorry. From Yahoo Fin, there's a um, file on there called uh, stock info import get data. And get data is a function. So we just imported a function from a library. So from trade stat logger dot logger import simple logger. Give ID auto, uh, auto completes, it's super nice. Okay, let me actually go over what pandas is real quick. Um, so pandas is a library that you can do. Okay, import pandas. And we actually don't need to import pandas because when because the Yahoo fins like already imports auto imports like libraries it needs to run. Okay, so let me just go over what pandas is. I hate using Windows. Windows terminal is awful. LS. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Linux game. Fuck Windows. I hate Windows. Sometimes. It's nice for gaming. Gamers right no, yeah. We need gamers to rise up. Our gamers rise up. <laughs> gamers rise up. It got banned for uh, hate speech. Sad, big sad. Okay, import pandas. Okay, let's. Oops, I forgot to go into Python. Okay, Python dash i. Okay, I'm just. I, I did choose intro.py for some specific reason. I just need to get into the interactive shell. Okay, let's do import pandas. Okay, let's, so pandas have these things are called data frames. And what data frame, <laughs> give me your phone, I'll give it back to you. Give me your phone, you're not paying attention. Man, no, you're not. not. Give me your phone, give me the phone. I'll give it back to you. Can you watch? I promise I'll give it back to you. Well, oh, you're gonna use, <laughs> well, you gotta watch, you're not watching, you're gonna play on your phone, do you need free education? I'll give it back to you after we're done. No. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. I, I was trying to get the phone from my little brother. Freaking play on his phone while I'm, I'm spewing the gospel. I'm spewing the gospel right now. Yeah, he has the audacity to play on his phone. Okay, pandas is basically like a two by, it's like a matrix, it's, you can store matrix with rows and columns. 
Okay, so let's create a, and they're usually stored in a object called a data frame. So let's create a, let's create a um, two, so let's create a two by two matrix. Okay. Pandas. Oh yeah, something you can do is you can import pandas as something else. Like you can do whatever you want, but usually you do PD. And so what this allows you to do is reference pandas using PD, and that will save you a lot of time. And like I mentioned earlier, pandas, programmers are kind of lazy, so they try to reduce how much they have to do. So let's do x equals, let's create a pd.data frame. Let's give it. Um, so what you can do is you give it a list of rows. So zero, one, one, two, so, so each row, no, each list that you pass in represents one row of the data frame. So we've given a one, two. So one of its rows is a one, two. In the row is one, two. So let's give it another row, three, four. So, Pandas is actually useful in a lot of research areas, including biology, statistics. It is not just finance that Pandas is useful for. Pandas originated in finance, but its influence has spilled over to all disciplines. So you can see here, we have our first row here, one, two, one, two, the three, four, three, four. Okay, now, However, so this is the first row and the second row, this first column and second column. But usually, if you think about a spreadsheet, let's pull up an image. Oh, okay, let's pull up the image of a spreadsheet. Okay, so what do you guys notice about this spreadsheet? Like, what are some elements? There's one element that I'm looking for. Oh, shoot. What, what are some elements here? Oh, where? I mean, like, yes, headers. That is exactly right. You, you got a straight on F. So let's give these things headers. Okay, um, okay, so, um, okay, so how do you do it? You do it with the columns keyword. Columns equals, and what this allows us to do is there's like a lot of optional arguments, like um, like a bunch of Boolean things, bunch of like things that you can pass in. However, to indicate that we want to add an optional argument, because like columns is an optional argument, because if you don't put columns, it auto generates it from zero to well, how many columns you have. However, we want our own custom column. So we do is pass in a column, <coughs> columns, and then we give a list of all the headers we want. So uh, let's see, jail, jail time serve. Here, wait. I forgot a what I, I forgot a square bracket because this, this is a list of lists. So what I had earlier was I had a list. I didn't close this. It was like this. I only had one bracket, so I need to add another bracket. And so what is actually now? so now we have our column names. So you need one, you need one name argument 
for every column you have. So we, since we have two columns here, because like, so we put two columns in every row, right? And so we have to have two column names, one for each column. So we can actually add another row. We actually added another row. As you can see, in each row, there's only two elements, and each one of those represents a column. Does that make sense, everyone? What does that make sense? Okay, if this, it doesn't make sense, just tell me. Okay, so what happens if we want to access everyone's jail time server? So what we can do is we, like a dictionary, we give the column we want. Like, remember, if you have a dictionary, you put like, this is the same way the how you access things in um pot with a uh, pandas data frame is the same way you access it with it. and so what we get is we get that one column you just get this weight column right here and we get all the values does that make sense okay that is basically and the thing with these columns is that you can do a lot of cool stuff with these columns. You can call methods like um, sum. Or you can call standard deviation. Um, uh, yeah, you have to STD if you, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Standard deviation is STD. Isn't that funny? Uh, probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can do a bunch of uh, cool stuff. You can also get the, so, so the reason why you like pandas is because it organizes data really nicely for you into a two by two. And you can do all a bunch of cool stuff with the data like max 500. You can see here 500 is indeed the max number. And so that is basically a quick overview of pandas. Okay, so what happens if we want to find a correlation between Okay, what happens if we want to try to find a correlation between um Let's import from those real quick. What happens if we want to see if there's a correlation between weight and jail time served? Well, we hope not, because it can be kind of saying that people who are fatter or skinnier serve more jail time, but uh, it, uh, who cares? Um, well, there's a plotting library called matplotlib. So from matplotlib dot import the pyplot as plt. And plt allows us to plot stuff. So how do we plot this data? Multi dot plot. So we need to give it like a row of data. No, we need to give it a list of x values and a list of y values. So let's say your x values, like uh, let's give it, call it A, like one, two, two, three. B equals four, five, six. You get, so, this corresponds to the first x coordinate. This is the first y coordinate. This is the first x coordinate. This is the first y coordinate. So if you have something like this, wouldn't work because there's not a corresponding x coordinate for. So you can take these two, and you can plot it. And once you plot it, the they internally create a graph and stuff, all of that stuff. And so once you plot it, you actually have to show it because it graphs it, but you don't see it. So show basically just makes it visible. So let's try this out. Yo, look at that, it's, pr it's a pretty graph right here we have. 
However, matplotlib also has support for Python, I mean pandas. So instead of plotting A and B, you can plot the rows of X and the rows of Y. I mean, no, the, 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 the one column X and compare it with another column X, Y. So how do we access a column? Do you remember? So we can plot, try to see if there's a correlation between someone's jail time serving weight. I misspelled it. So you cannot access something that you misspell. Because like it doesn't have a jailed time serve call. So I had to change it. I had to fix it real quick. And there we have it. Um, it kind of looks weird. What happens if it, it, it plots this point, then it plots this point and connects them, and then it plots this point and connects them? The reason this happens is because it assumes it, it usually works with time series or ordered data. So this should be time. And since time is already ordered naturally, because like one hour, two, so you have one, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 2 p.m. naturally comes after 1 p.m. So it's nat usually naturally ordered. So the, there's, that's the reason the line looks kind of weird. But, so that is how you visualize it. Yeah. And so let's go over a basic strategy. Now we are applying everything we learned. Okay, so let's get this data of Apple, right? So Apple data. So get data, take some arguments. So you can see here, these are arguments. Your IDE can also tell you. So ticker, let's, let's ticker equals, okay, so ticker, the ticker we have chosen is AAPL. Um, how do I know this? Apple's AAPL while well, I look up Apple. Right there, AAPL, that's the ticker. And when you execute an order for a stock, that is the ticker you buy it from. That is the name. So we have a get data here, right? Get data. And so we get the data of Apple. Then we specify a start date. So let's do 01, 01, 2018. Let's let's do the end date as 01-01-2020. So this is two years. And so let's see what this looks like. A head is basically an argument that allows you to see the first five rows. So let's see what this looks like. So uh, the reason there's this backslash here is because there's too many there's too many columns, so it, like spilled over. So you can see that there's five rows, and imagine this air. Imagine the thing at the bottom was just like where that back the backslash is. Or that yeah, that's backslash. So you have a date. So earlier we had indexes indices with integers. Well, Let's go back to two. Okay, so back back then we had so let me recreate what I did. Let me recreate X real quick. Okay, so we can actually set the so X. So data frames has a thing called an index. And since we do have three rows, we need three dates. So let's give it like May 2nd. And then another is May 3rd. And then another is like May 4th. X now. 
So print X before the Oops, I forgot to, I didn't, I, I, I met, I didn't set it. I have to set it equal to this. So you can see here, it's zero and two, the default ordering of, because this is the zeroth column, this is the first column, the second column. However, I passed it three arguments, one for each row and specified a date. So this is our new index, five, two, five, three, and five, four. And so you can set the index to some other value. And so this is why, so this is why you're allowed to have in, um, date indices. So this is it's like five two, but instead of five two, you have 2018, January 1st, this first second. <clears throat> okay, does, hopefully everyone is copy, following along on their own computer because best way to learn is just to like, even if you don't fully understand it, it's just to type it out. And once you do a few times, you get the intuition behind it. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Does this all make sense? Hopefully this all makes sense. Oh, uh, so the reason you are having this error is because you are using double quotes. So try to use single quotes. I have not, I think, so, yeah, I actually don't, I, I can't remember. There's something about them being different, Python single. Oh yeah, so they're actually different data representations. So double quotes is a literal string, while single quote is a regex. And since these time objects are like, I don't know, if you use, re if you allow a regex parser, some regex parser that allows the package to understand the date better. Um, so if, once you figure, so you have to, so there's different data representations. It's super weird. So um, use single quotes for everything. So once you fix that, please tell me and then I can, we'll go on from now. Uh, did you fix it for, did you get single quotes for all of it? Here, let me just copy paste my code and uh, you copy, just copy paste that code into your ID. Oh shit, I forgot the ticker too. And I put that ticker before too. Okay, can you share your screen? Um, can you share your screen? The, can you get the button to share your screen or let me, uh, or we can have a break.
Um, maybe share screen is probably working. Oh, thank you. That, that'll help. That is super weird. Did it? Okay, did did you do this properly? What the fuck? Okay. Uh, yeah. Here, let me research this area real quick. That's weird. I replicate the error. Oh yeah, if you have like the weird dates. Yeah. Okay, so Okay, have you, is it working right now? Okay, that is great to hear. Yeah, so I understand. Okay, I figured out why you had the problem. I think the reason is you had your start date and your end date on the same day. And it was on the day when the markets were closed. And what, what, so what this library does is basically, um, so it takes all the days where the market's closed and just like deletes the, it just does not have data for those days because there is no data when the stock market is closed, right? Because it's closed. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, that is it. That is the, um, so, cause like the just to close thing. So what it does is it automatically uh, adjusts, there was no, like it tried to compute some objects to close on a day where the market didn't even came even close because it never opened in the first place. Okay, thank us. Um, it is not. It is good that everyone is now.
Um, okay, let us go over some a strategy. Okay, so we are going to what we're going to do is we're going to buy on. Okay, so, so we are going to buy on Tuesday and sell on Friday. So the rationale for that is people on Tuesday they feel like it's not Monday. Everyone hates Mondays, right? Like. Unless you're some sort of like psychopath, you like Monday. But for most people, you're not a psychopath, so you do not like Monday. And but Tuesday, it's still early into the week. You're focused, and it, you don't got no Monday hatred in you. <laughs> the Monday hatred got disappeared with Monday. So that means you're more eager. And you have a po more positive mood and you're more eager, you're more optimistic about the market, even though that's probably irrational because, uh, but humans are irrational despite what market, despite what foolish economists assume. Humans are irrational. And on that note, let me tell a joke about economists because we need to break it up with something fun. Okay. A researcher is looking for people of different IQs to, um, to see what the impact of IQ is on, um, the, <clears throat> on like their viewpoints of morality. Like say more intelligent, like he hypothesized that more intelligent people would see ethical issues like say, so like one ethical issue is like this trolley, the one person and the five person trolley, right? So you, do you turn the lever to save five people, but you actively cause the death of one person? Oh, blah, 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 something about that. That's ethics, right? And so he wanted to see how people of different intelligent levels respond to different ethical issues. And so what he does is he, <coughs> Sorry. Um, so what he does is, <clears throat> is he, uh, uh, sorry, he, 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 found, he, he was looking for random people on the streets to participate in the study. And fortunately, he found enough people for high IQ ranges, enough people for middle IQ ranges, but he only needed one more person in the low IQ range. So he goes up to one man and uh, asks, Sorry, sir, I'm not to be rude, but I need to ask you um, if you are of low IQ because we are doing a study that will impact humanity. Well, like it really won't impact humanity. It's just, it's just exaggerated bullshit that scientists do, you know, to get people to convince people to do their shit studies. And so the person he said, the person he asked this to replied, Oh, I'm an accomplished economist. And, and then the researcher said, well, that's perfect. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you guys get the joke? Does it make sense? Ah, uh, yes. One person gets it. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, so so the joke is that he is looking for some. Yeah, 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 yeah. Economist dumb, low IQ, dumb. low IQ. <laughs> yeah, there's a, people like to make fun of economists because they're like it's kind of useless, you know. Like this is a joke about how economists are useless and stupid. Yeah, yeah, this is another Albert Einstein. Okay.
Okay, I'll give you guys a Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm glad that I, you guys like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty funny, so that's okay, so let's get to our strategy. So on two did I just went on a long ass tangent? Like I, I had a high school, I had a high school teacher in freaking uh, in uh, who freaking went on the longest tangent, and he sometimes didn't even freaking teach. And so I'm sort of like <laughs> does it go on the long ass tangent? But it helps you break the mind because like some of the stuff we're doing is quite complex. Okay, let us implement a strategy that. Okay, here's some. Okay, so here's some element. Okay, so we want to buy. Oh yeah. We have a simple logger, so we need to create a logger object. Okay, logger equals simple logger. And so logger allows you to log trade. So lo so ba what you can do is just do log. Um, you give the security name a uh, uh, ticker. Why don't you put it after? Because I didn't declare, I didn't make a ticker variable. So ticker, you buy like um, shares equals like you buy 100 shares, you buy 100 shares. Uh, so for this example, I'm just going to have you buy and sell blocks of 100s. And you can get the price. Um, how, you, how you can get a price at a specific date for a data frame is you can get some like, so let's, let's have, a, so APL has an index object, right? Not index. And you can access a specific element by some like date. But we you don't have to worry about what this date exactly is. And so we so say you can log a price on a certain day. So say it's like zero one zero one twenty nineteen, like something like that. X. So you can like log a trade of price X and then shit. No. Okay, that so that's how you log price. Okay, that's how you basically log something. However, you do not need to manually create these strings. So here's some hints. So you have to use this function. This function, you have to do something with the data uh, in the, uh, no. Um, Apple data index. You need to do something with a for loop. For loop. Okay. You like so you buy. On, oh, oh wait, oh. okay, so there's a column. How do you get the open column? You specify open. Okay, so create, so you basically simulate, you create a strategy to buy, uh, buy, buy 100 shares by APL on open, sell on close. And then <laughs> two states for, for Fridays, short 100 shares, um, buy back on close. Okay, if you guys don't know what short is, is when you don't own any shares, but you sell and you sell shares anyways. It's like, how do you do that? Well, you do that by borrowing shares from the brokerage. So like, say you're using um, like E-Trade, so each trade has shares of like a bunch of people, like all, like, cause all these users own shares, right? So they can lend you the shares of their other users. They give it to you, you shorten. 
So you sell them to the market. So now you basically have like negative shares, right? And then later you buy back these shares and then you return it to the brokerage. And brokerage is basically what allows you to buy and sell stocks, like Robinhood, like I showed you earlier. And <clears throat> so that's basically what shorting is. And how do you short? Okay. Uh, you just have negative because to sell. So when you when you want to log when you add want to like subtract trades, you put a negative. Share price price equal equals some date. Okay, so I. Okay, so I want you guys to all try, just try, try your best to, yeah, let me make it super, much more simple. Wait, no, I need to go over one more thing. Okay, no, I don't. Okay, so. This is the task I gave you. So I'm gonna give you guys like around five minutes to try to figure this out. Like, don't worry if you don't know, because like, it's not obvious at first. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys like five minutes to try to figure out the strategy and then I'll go over the answer. And if you need, if, okay, um, one more thing before I be quiet. I'm, I'm just, if you guys have any questions on like a specific concept that I, um, that you need to know, like indexing, iterate for loops, just tell me and I can just go over it again. Okay, so at 11.46, I will check back in on you guys. I'll tip out, tighten up. Okay, um,
Okay, hopefully everyone's done by now. Um, does anyone want to give me guess what the first line is? Oh wait, shit. I don't think you guys could have done this. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. I did not teach you guys enough to actually do this. Okay, so something I forgot to mention is that, like, okay, you can do integer location. Okay, so I want everyone to come back here and uh, I'll go over the answer. Um, it's my bad. After, I, something you can do. Okay, so is everyone watching? Hopefully, everyone's watching right now. So you can do x dot loc for energy locating row. That is how you do. Um, to get the first row. Um, so you put in a column. You just. So th this is one column data. This is like the item in the first column. This is item in the second column. While in a, a, an op like while if you want to do column indexing, you just do not do any dot blah blah blah. Something so x dot i loc is stands for integer um, location indexing. While loc you can do uh, it's just whatever the did did have for that. <sighs> okay, so. Okay, so but you guys should be able to know the first. Does does anyone want me to give, give? Can someone give me the first line of code? Like this does not need an help certain knowledge. Does anyone know the first line? Okay. Okay, so actually, okay, so are you are you guys are you guys fine with me going over the strategy right now? Okay. I will now go over the strategy. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to iterate over the dates. And as you remember, as you remember earlier, so we have to the dates are stored in the index. So so for date in Apple data dot index. And then we have to get the date. So let's just give a placeholder. So D equals date dot to pi three time. Okay, it was. Okay, so what I basically did here, so pandas like, so we just took the date and turned it into a daytime object. Daytime object is like a standard daytime library. And daytime is basically like June 1st. 3 p.m. or something like that. It's like a date. And then we have to do get the weekday. So weekday. Oh. Can someone guess? Here, the, we want to get the weekday. Can someone guess what the function is? It's like super obvious. I want to get the weekday from a daytime. Uh, very close, very close. Weekday. Yes. Let me check it. Uh, here's a tip. So if you don't know something, here, uh, watch this. Python get day of week from, from daytime.
Yeah, oh, yeah. This, this guy's. This is forbidden arts. This is forbidden arts. What I'm doing right now. It's a hat. Uh, this is this is what what university the universities hate me for this one simple strip trick. <laughs> Whoa, I found it right here. Dot weekday. And it gives me a inner and he even explains it. Monday is zero, Sunday is six. So that means let's write it out. So Monday is one. I still have it here. Uh there's too much typing. I'll just copy paste it. Like you guys get the point. Monday's one Monday is zero. One is Tuesday. We don't care about Saturday and Sunday because they're not in our data frame. And that is because on Saturdays and Sundays, stocks don't trade, right? Okay, weekday. Okay, so this is an integer. Okay, so, oh yeah, shit, I forgot to go over the if statements. I actually forgot to go over if statements. Okay. Fuck. Okay, so if. Let's, let's create a x equals like true. If x print okay, if I, how did I how did I forget? Okay, well, like is it well? It's basically it translates to basically. So if D, no, weekday, equal, equal. Okay, so we're buying on Tuesday. What day? So, so we see Tuesday, right? And we want to buy on Tuesday. So one, D, weekday, equal, equal one. And what equal, equal do is return a true or false value if that statement is true. It's, it's, sort, of, it's sort of weird, but so like just think of it as equals like does the left side equals the right and i forgot i'll go over the boolean so, okay boolean is a true false so say say like is it blue is it blue like and you call it on a car it can be true or false it's either blue or it's not blue it could be red yellow whatever okay that is boolean it's a true or false value and so if this is true that means we know it is a tuesday so what we want to do is log a trade of Apple uh, ticker equal. We want to log a trade security it, ticker um, share price equals oh yeah we need oh yeah uh, let's get the open and close let's get the open on the day so open equals D, no, APLD. Remember that we can index something using dot, dot loc. And since we got the date, if D date right here, we have the date that we can access it, dot loc. However, then we have to access it again using um, open. This looks kind of weird. So let me break it down to two steps. So open equals AAPL. Okay, so one row, row, data frame, one row data frame, a row of a data frame, which is a, uh, it's sort of like a, it acts like, it behaves like a data frame itself. It's like a mini data frame. It's like a one, one row, it's like, a data frame that only has one row, that's how it behaves, so one row. I don't know, hopefully you guys get the point. And then we want to get the row where it is on the date. Okay, then we want to, so since this is data frame, we can get the open by accessing that column. So what I did is I basically just did both steps at one time with this. You can just sort of imagine, so you could just, cut this and just put it here, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we get the open on that day. Okay, so if you guys don't know what open means, 
open is like when the market opens, like it's 9.30. 9.30, market opens, trading activity starts. So what is the price when the market opens? That is what the open price is. Let's do close. Let me just copy this code. And instead of getting the open, we can get the close. And so we are going to, we are going to buy on open. Oh yeah, let me, let me make it more expensive price. So what this does is it buys 100 shares at the open price. Then, then we want to sell at the close. Oh, excuse me. So negative 100 to indicate we are selling 100 shares. Else, we, el, else if, but in Python, instead of else if, you do else if, Weekday equal equal four, which is Friday. If you can see, go back up here, Friday. If weekday is four, so Friday. Um, we short it. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'll explain why this, like the intuition behind this strategy. Because like on Friday, people will usually try to sell their stocks because they are they don't want to worry about it over the weekend. And so what that does is it pushes prices down because more people are selling. And uh, when you like. Oh yeah, I was supposed to short them. Okay, so we have logged all this trade. Okay, does this all make sense? Does ever does is everyone on board with this? Okay, tell tell me if there is anything that does not make sense right now. Does everyone think okay, so how about this? Everyone type type something, type that it does make sense. Or type something that doesn't that doesn't make sense in the chat. Okay, thank you. Okay, wow. Yeah, this is kind of okay. So now we have logged all these we bought and sell. So how do we know how we do how we did? So logger has a function called uh, graph statistics and it allows us to see how our graph it. Let's see how we do. I forgot to delete something. Okay, I just had some like bad, bad code up, bad line of code up there. Don't worry about it. Uh, one second. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I forgot to comment on some stuff. Okay, I actually created this library and I accidentally put a bug in here. Here, you guys can watch me how to create like a library. So when you did pip install create stat logger, when you did that, you basically downloaded one of my libraries that I wrote, that I made public. And uh, I need to uh, update it real quick.
Okay, so th this is pretty interesting. Okay, so now I need to create a new release because releases basically have like a zip file that contains all the code. And it, I, I need the URL of the download. One four, and so what this does is it creates a. Oh shit! So I just created a new release, and I copied the tar cz. I don't know what it means, but it doesn't really matter. Like you can just do stuff blindly, and th so this is download URL here. So replace that, add a new version. Okay, um, set up. And how did I learn this? Um, I copied it off some medium data science article. So I'm not that impressed with that. I did not figure out this out. Let's just. Yeah, this is an article I use. Oh, not very interesting. You guys probably aren't going to use this for a while. Okay, I need the obvious to do pip install upgrade. And I need you guys to all do that real quick. Sorry. <laughs> now you know how to upgrade your packages. Okay. Now let's run it again. Oh, thank God it's working. Oh my God. <laughs> I fixed it up real quick. Wow, okay, this is okay. It's pretty good. We have made, uh, you can see a bunch of statistics over here, how much we profited, how much profit per trade. Okay, does everyone have this window? Okay, uh, um, please ask me if you need any help to get to this. Okay, good job. Uh, thank you for coming. Thanks a lot for coming. Um, okay, you have this? Okay, do uh, you have any questions? Uh, do you, okay, you're, you're the only person left here. Uh, AJ, do you have any uh, questions before? Um, no, I'm cool. Okay, thanks for coming. No, no, it's cool. Thanks a lot for coming. It's also on his eye. Uh, no, okay, it's just out. Oh. What? Okay, so if it's just me, I have used, um, I know Python quite a lot. So you could just skip over all the stuff. You could just tell me the high level details. That would be great. Like I, oh. I know nothing about finance, but I, I know Python very well. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. Oh, you, you don't have to come to this. Yeah, I had older uh, videos. Uh, I didn't know that. I just saw the Reddit post and I came. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Are you a CS major? Yep. Hmm, what year are you? What? Sophomore? Are you a sophomore, junior? I'm a freshman. 
Oh, you're a freshman. Oh, I'm a freshman too. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you want to learn? Is there something you want to learn? Uh, I just want to know, like, uh, I was kind of, I thought you would go more over finance specifically. Oh, so, yeah. Let me go over some, how about statistics? Do you want me to talk about statistics now? Um, sure. I, I, I know NumPy and Pandas, by the way. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, you already didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, I know NumPy pretty well. Um, <laughs> you probably learned nothing today then, right? I mean, yeah, it was fun. I well, say. I mean, at, at least I made some funny jokes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, do you understand statistics? Yeah, I understand statistics. Like basic statistics, like yep. standard deviation, shit like that? Yeah, T test, B test. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here, let me cover. Do you know what moving average strategy is? So, do you do you have you done any have you done any financial trading? No, never. I don't. I know nothing about that. Oh, okay. So you use pandas for something else, I presume, right? Mm. Like biology or something like that. Uh, I'm just wondering, like, could you, like, in the end, what you're doing right now is just taking a log of, but in the, at the end of the day, you want to do, like, real trading, so you need an API, right? You're going to yep, call it. I actually have a, something that actually, um, well, it paper trades. Well, the market's closed right now, but um, I will go over, in another lesson, I will go over how to actually execute trades using Alpaca, mm -hmm. and that will actually allow you to place real money orders into the market. Mm -hmm, I see. This is just, yeah. What I had was just for back testing or like testing, like yeah, just, you're just testing it live, and you want to. Okay, here. Let me go over a different strategy. This is moving average. Mm. Oh uh, wait, so are you part of a club? For oh this? yeah, I'm part of the ATC club here. Let me show you. Um, yeah, let me post in the chat. This club I'm part of. That's that's the club I hosted this workshop to. Mm -hmm. So what did you do over there? Like, what's the club about? Um, it's basically what we did today, like towards later stuff. We just program algorithms and stuff like that. Is it just well, for what? This for financial trading? Is that just yep. a specific domain that you're working on? Okay, I see. Mm. Okay. Um, if you want to check it out. You get, you, if you join right now, I can just like add your report or something. Oh, okay, fine. I'll go if, you. if you want to. No, no. I, I'm just saying if you wanted to join. But no, if you do want to. I just okay. want to look over. What? Um, could you paste the link? Okay, I got it. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it. I have like 20 things open. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, no problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah, gotcha. So in the end, like, how do you determine when to buy, when to stop, when to sell, my bad? Um, you research some strategy based on some sort of intuition. Mm. Um, like you can like, so you test it out and if it makes money, you could try it out in the real market. Um, mm. or say, say you have like an earnings call, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, no, a uh, earnings call. So every, so quarterly, which is four times a year, a mm. company announces their earnings, right? And which is how much they made how much they profited in those three months, right? Yeah, okay. And so an algorithm could try to predict before, before the company tells everyone the earnings are, they try to predict what the earnings are through mm. like 
Google, they see the traffic, they see the what number of searches through Google, they um, use satellite to see the, to measure the number of cars at a store, like say you're doing it for Walmart. Mm. You, just, you use like a freaking satellite imagery to count the number of cars using machine learning. Mm. And you estimate their profit based on the number of customers. I see, I see. Or you use past earnings and try to predict future earnings. Mm. And so, so like you try to predict earnings before the company announces it. And then like, so say if you think the earnings will be a lot higher than what people expect. So what mm. happened is you buy stocks before they announce earnings. The company announces super high earnings. Then people, a lot of people see that this is a super profitable company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone like rushes into that buy that stock. However, I, you bought the stock beforehand, and so the buyers drive up the price. Then you sell after mm. the earnings call, right? Because people drove up the price. Then you make a profit. Okay. That's one I'm example. Getting, getting at it. Um, mm -hmm. Have you tried it in the real world? Have you tried with your own money? It's trading like no, I've not actually done any like real money algorithm trading because um, you need 25k before you can like seriously use that algorithm because when you oh, have really? less than 25k, you only get four trades per day. You only get what? Four trades? No, four trade. Uh, three trades every five days. Oh. So, nice. so like you need 25k before you can actually trade on like a high volume. But you could and, just try with that. Let's see if it makes money. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, paper trading, yeah. Well, th what I did was basically test if this was profitable, right? Mm -hmm. In so, Oh yeah, you're just taking Tuesday and selling on Wednesday, right? That's buying on Tuesday and selling on Friday. Friday, yeah. That's basically what you're doing. Yeah. But that's not a good, I guess you would, I think in the long run, you're just gonna average out your income right oh uh, yeah well like i can't go over like a profit it, it, like if if algorithms are super easy to make profitable like if i just like took 10 lines of code to make a profit on algorithm yeah. then they want to be then then everyone can do it right but yeah, not everyone exactly. can do it so i had i just had to go over a basic strategy that i could teach mm. for this lesson right where did you learn all of this um i don't know mm. i just like googled yeah. that's true hey, let me let me show you my dark art okay Pandas tutorials, tutorials. Oh, just, yeah. And then I uh, go to send it. No, I, I, pandas I pandas. You, can, you can learn stuff like pandas, numpy, matplotlib, but how do you learn about the stock market? That's what I want to know. Oh, stock market? Investopedia. Yeah. Also read books. Investopedia. Hmm. So, like, or you can like read a paper and then you can see all these terms and you can Google them. Hmm. Or we can look up uh, trading strategies, trading, uh, trading, trading strategies. So you go to the trading strategy, and then you see uh, swing trade, swing trade. Hmm. Okay, it says volatility. What the hell does volatility mean? Then you Google volatility. Hmm. And then you learn volatility. That's how I basically learn. I just Google something. I just Google trading strategies or something like that. Then I just keep Googling. And then I just look up definitions. You know, mm. that's, that's how I learned a lot. That's nice. Yeah. But well, I also read a few books. There's mm. a lot of free books online. You just Google free PDF books, free, something like that. You want to see something, something that I made? Oh, sure. So, yeah, you, do you know the, the trend that was going on called the Bill Clinton swag? I don't know if you're are you like active on social media. A what? Are you active on social media? I use Facebook sometimes. Hmm? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, so there was like a trend going on like last week that uh, uh, you just create a photo of Bill Clinton and you put your albums in it and you share it online. Do you have a link or something? Yeah, so I made a, I made, do you know, uh, do you know Flask? Yeah, I know Flask. I, I use Flask to make, uh, I sent something like that, yeah. So, that it basically uses your uh, Spotify listening as to create one. No, oh, it's taking a long time. That's weird. Oh, you made this? Yeah. Uh, go up, go up, go above. Like, log into Spotify. It's Bill Clinton? As in, like, it's a real Bill Clinton? You'll see it uh, once you do it.
Oh, you don't have a Spotify account? I don't use Spotify. Wait, could, could you just tell me what it does? Uh, <laughs> can I share my screen with you? Um, can you share it? Like, is it uh, enabled? I can disable this screening. Uh, I know this is going off topic, but it's just me, so I make guess. Co-host. Here, I'm going to make you co-host real quick. No, ask to start. Make co-host. Okay, can you share your screen now? Yeah, let me pause my share actually. Okay, I see your screen. I only see a slight line. I only see a tiny line. Oh, you only see a tiny line? That's weird. Let me try sharing again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One more able to share it. Yeah, uh, try sharing again. Maybe it's because I was sharing at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's working now. So this creates like this, based on your listing history. This was an online trend that was going on last week. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty so cool. I made, I made one that uses your Spotify history to do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I just like making fun of stuff like these. Uh- where 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 did it trend on like Instagram or somewhere? Yeah, Instagram. Instagram. How how many people used it? Oh, for my app, only forty four people used it. My my mind didn't got viral, but there's like a re, the guy. Do you see my screen? This was the original person who made it. Oh, I see. The people were right there, like they would like add their and then share it. Oh, that was okay. So, going on. That was I made one that uses your Spotify history. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, did you use Pandas or something with it? Uh, no, I didn't use Pandas for this. Pandas for oh, data. No, no, no. I just used, I just called the API and I got the URL and then I posted it there. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, what class have you, have you taken? 163? 163? Nope. 163. Oh, never worked. <laughs> yeah, this class. Nope. Uh, this this goes over a lot of Python stuff that you go. They have pandas. You have a little bit of ML. I didn't like that part. Like they didn't go deep into it. Well, they probably don't have enough. It's a level one hundred class, right? So yeah. they can't probably go over. Deep when did you take one forty three? Yeah. When did you take one forty three? Uh, last quarter. No, two quarters ago. Um, oh yeah, I took it too with Hunter. Oh yeah. Wait, were you in my class then? Yeah, I guess probably. Yeah. How's it going? How's the winter quarter going so far for you? Well, it's spring quarter. Oh, spring quarter. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's fine, I guess. I like it. I actually like it because, mm. like, I get to eat better, you know? Because, like, mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about food because my parents, my mom just makes it. <laughs> that's true. And I don't have to walk between classes. Mm-hmm. And so I have, like, so much more energy every day. So I get a lot more done. Sure. Yeah, that's just me. I don't know. I, I, I stay, I'm like equally productive at home and at school. So. That's fine. Not like on campus. For me. Uh, I, I hear a lot of people said that they couldn't focus at home or something like that. That's kind of like me. Yeah, I focus more on campus probably. Yeah, but I, I sit in my dorm all day. So mm. it's like similar environment. Mm. Oh, by the way, what, like, what else do you do in the club? Like, do you just play? Do you just teach? Well, I teach. Um, we also have like lectures from instructors and stuff like that. We also, uh, last quarter when we were still on campus, um, we did group projects. Mm. Yeah. I see. That's nice. Well, I guess I'll see you soon, I guess, probably. Okay. Cool. It was nice. Bye. Yeah. I also have other videos that you can watch about oh. like like strategies implementation. Hmm, that would be cool. Is it on the um, you can, you, it's like the talk I said earlier. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. or I, I can skip to YouTube. Cool. And let me just post it right here. And there's two of those. Uh, it's also on the on the Facebook page on one of the posts on the event. Blah blah. blah. Oh, I see. It's 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 pretty easy to find. So okay, thanks for coming, dude. Yeah, sure, no problems. See you. Bye. Yeah.
Okay, hello. So, I so, un, un, unfortunately, I did forget to start filming. However, um, at the start, so I got to classes. However, I forgot to um, record. No, no, no oh, sorry. I forgot to record at the beginning. So, I have skipped over some stuff. I did not go over some stuff. So, let me make it up right now. Okay, so x equals. So how do you create a variable in Python? You can do x equals. Yeah, just everyone just ignore what down there. So x equals five, and so this creates an integer of five. This is an integer five, and x stores it. You can do you can also store string data like a b c d or like Jeff. Another thing you can do is x equals like a b c. So in Python, types are not fixed. Usually types are fixed. In, no, in like Java, types are fixed. So say you have like an int x equals zero. You cannot do like x equals abc. A, a, this is not allowed. Um, usually in strings in Python are used single quote, but in like Java, you use double quotes. So you can, you can change X from a five to ABC in Python, but you can't do it in Java. And that is because of dynamic typing, like the variables are not bound to types. So, but, so that's basically why you can change X from a five to ABC. <clears throat> okay, so how do you create a function? So say you have, so like in, a, in a, like math, you have like an F of X, equals like x times x, well like x squared, right? So how do we emulate that in Python? So you could, to indicate that you are writing a function, do a f, then you do like squared, give it, you give it a function name, it can be anything. However, it is best to label it with something that is descriptive. You take it x as input, then you return the square of that, which is x times it. And you can sort of see it, like f, like you can sort of, I hope you guys can sort of see how this translates to this. Okay, so let's try it out, print x. Okay, print x, okay. Oh no, print squared squared of like five. So we know that it's working. Oops, that one. Oh. And you see that this, this is indeed a function that works. So a common mistake you might do is like x times x. However, because you do not have a return statement, when you call squared, it doesn't return anything. So there's nothing returned. It's a none object. There's nothing, basically nothing. Okay, so how do you do like, you want to if, so we have like x equals some like random number, like how about a equals some random number, like 10, right? So what happens, how do we do, how do we check if, if a, if we want to do something if a is greater than five or a is less than five. So if a is if is less than five, then we want to print a a is less than five. Else, which would imply a is greater than or equal to five. Print five. So that's basically how you do like um, if and else and if. You can just think about it like English, like so. It say you're it's raining. So if it is raining, then you have an umbrella. Else you don't have an umbrella, right? That is so you can think of if and else as the same way you do it in English. Okay, let's cover. Um, 
let's go over some uh, let's go over a list what list is so you can create a list like some some list give it call it a one two three four and that basically and you can access things by indexing and you do it with these square brackets put a of zero and that will get the first element you trust me one so let's make the first element two Uh, okay, and something you can do pretty, okay, so now let's go over a for loop. Um, wait, no, one second. Um, so how do you get the last element? So what you can do is you can get, you can, so in Python, there's a built-in function called a, lang a, and that basically returns the length of a, and then this is be four. However, since arrays do start at zero, um, so you got two is zero, two is one, three is at two, and four is at three. And let me make it more clear. So zero, one, two, three. However, the lengths would return at four because there's four objects in that list. So because to just the fact that Indexing starts at zero. We do minus one. Um, how so length a minus one, and that should return a four. And however, in Python, they automatically shorthand it. That allows you to just not have that length thing and just do negative one, and it does the same thing. So so if this looks kind of weird, you can just do length a and just visualize it like that. Okay, next we will go over list comprehension. Um, so let's have a y and let it equal a for um, z equals okay these variables don't really matter you can just put some random letter in there as long as you haven't used it in uh sure okay, okay, okay. so what happens if we want to add one to all the elements in here and store in a new list a three three so two plus one is three, two plus one is three, three plus four is four, four plus five, no, four plus one is five. So we want to get three, three, four, five. So what does the, oh shoot, I forgot to go over four loops. Yeah, let me go over what a four loop is. P and A, print P. So in each step of this for loop, it takes P and sets it to an element of A. So first it sets it to two, at a loops, it sets it to two again, loops, it sets it to three, loops, and it sets it to four. And then when we, so we can print these piece. So we got two, two, three, four, right here, two, two, three, four. And so these loops, so this thing, well we have, okay, so I, I talked about this earlier, just kind of ignore what I said, yeah, let me restart and try to explain it again. So here we have x for x in A. And what you notice here, so this is y right here. It is exactly like this because it takes x in a for x in a. So x it gets equal to an element in a two. Then it adds it to this array because you can see there, there are square brackets. Like this means a list. So it takes this value, adds it to the array, takes this value, adds it to the array, this value, adds it to the array. I mean, no, not array, list. Sorry, I said array, what, just like those. As it takes this and adds it to the list. So if we want to add one, we can just do plus one. So t first, t equals two. So what's two plus one? Three. t equals this two, it's two plus one, three. And you add them. Uh, t equals three plus one, no, t equals three, then three plus one is four. And then you store, four. this stores a four. And then t equals four, and four plus one is five, and you store a five. 
is this. And so that's basically what we can do to add one to all the lists. And that's basically the list crop room. OK, so obviously if we want to square all the elements. So we want to have 4, 4, 9, 16. So def square. So we can just alter this. So we can take a t, 2, and square. And then it adds it. Um, so this kind of might look kind of weird. Here, let me, let me try to prove it works. So it does work. Um, so think about it as like you you loop through this loops through every element sets t equals one element in a, and then this does an operation on it. This area you can do operation on it, and then it adds it to the list. So t let t equals the first element to square it, which is four. Then you add it, and you can see there's a four here. And then blah blah blah. You go to four square. You get sixteen. You add it here. And that's how you do list comprehension. Well, how, so here we have a two lines. How can we shorten this? We can actually do something called a lambda. So here, so there's a programmer who's lazy. He wants to make this function a one-liner. So def, so you can actually store. So before we go over lambdas, let me um show you that you can store functions instead of a variable so say func equals square and then store functions are data is something you can store in variables so let me just copy paste it just to make it extra explicit and you can print so func of like three and this will print nine all right that looks sort of weird but just Think about <clears throat> just func, this equals this. And so when you put the parentheses here, call the function, call this function in the square and the thing inside of it. Well, here we have three lines. However, our program is very lazy. So let's make a different function. The program tries to do this. So func two. f square x he, he wants to do it all in one line he wants to do this all in one line however this doesn't actually work so how do we get this to work instead we have to do a lambda so let's see the evolution equals so instead of f we replace that def with the lambda we don't need to give it a name because we already store it in a variable, so it's going to be an anonymous function. Um, so we don't give it a name. However, we need a parameter. So think about it. So we have we had a parentheses x here, like up here. Instead of parentheses x, you have x. You just get rid of the parentheses. Then you x times x and lambda ought. Um, oh, I spell I misspelled lambda. <laughs> okay, lambda, and how? So lambdas automatically return something. So you don't need the return statement. It automatically returns everything that's after this colon. And let's try func two of three. It should give. So right now we have a one right here, right? So it should do the same thing, nine. And that's basically land on. It's sort of weird, but just think about it as an evolution from this to this. And it'll make it easier to understand. OK. Next, I went over classes. OK, so a class is basically a template. 
for objects. So like some ob examples of objects could be like an animal or an, an apple or something like that. So let's create a dog, which is like object computer science wise. Def init. And this sort of like, init is basically the Python version of a constructor. Let's give it a breed. Um, and we can store it. So self is basically this. We can store in a breed. We can store this. And we can like interact with this data, like print info. So we can print the breed. Okay. However, so something else a dog can do is bark. So let's create a bark function. Bark. Okay, hey, let's create a dog. Okay, so since we have to construct an object with some parameters here. We have to give some arguments here. So let's create a husky. And he is a big chonker. So he is fat. He's 500 pounds or 500 unit masses. And then we can call the methods inside. So print info. Just skip bark for now. So as you can see here, it does print the info. Uh, what happens if we want? The dog, it's a good doggo, and he prints, he barks before you get the information. I don't know. Well, just go along. Just go along with it. And so you could do that. So you notice that this has a self. So like when you're working within a class, you need self. Whenever you access something that's within the class, you need to use the self keyword because that's how it it can it can help it dis distinguish itself from any parameters. And self also ref is it like sort of like this in Java. And so now it also barks when we print the info. Okay, so how do we extend this class? So say we need a more specific dog. So we can class, let's create a violent dog. And to extend, you put the you put parentheses and then you want to put the class you extend. And to be extra explicit, I'll just copy and paste this in here. And you can add new methods. So like um, attack person. And then you can give like a, a person argument that you want to attack. And then we can print that the dog attacked the person. Attacked, comma, person. And so we can create a violent dog now. So D equals. Uh, wait, actually, I think I go over the stuff here. Uh, okay, guy. Um, I actually go over this at the beginning of the. So, can, so if you guys are watching this right now, skip to the um, scroll. Just rewind your video back to the start. Just do it. Uh, uh, the video, the tutorial will pick up over there. Okay. 